Hello, this is Matthias Nestler from Skier Systems. I'm responsible for product development within the company and today I will introduce you to our advanced patterning technology with INB matching for production of slanted surface relief gratings. Before I go into the technical details, I will give you a short introduction on our company. Skia Systems uh, manufactures and designs vacuum processing equipment for the optics industry and the MEMS industry and uh, for sensor production. We are a privately owned company that is nine years old and we are located in Germany, in Chemnitz. This is 200 kilometers south of Berlin. Recently, we have more than, seven, uh, sorry, more than 117 employees and achieved an annual revenue of 70 million euro last year. Our products are used worldwide, so we have a worldwide sales and service partner network in more than 17 countries. Surface release gratings. What are they used for and how are they produced? For augmented reality glasses and mixed reality glasses, these surface relief gratings are the in-couplers and out-couplers of the image into your glasses. Uh, for the coupling, you have these diffractive structures that are sub-wavelengths. And uh, to get a uh, good coupling effect and uh, high brightness and uh, high efficiency, these uh, gratings need to be tilted, so the structure is slanted or tilted. And in uh, advanced designs, you also need a variation in the tilt angle over a certain area and maybe also a variation in the depth. Today I will introduce you a technique to create a varying angle surface relief grating. As these surface relief gratings can be etched either into the glass directly or into a stamp material that is then used to produce a coastly um, uh, acrylic glasses by molding or nano imprinting. How are surface relief gratings stru structured? How are they produced? Uh, an easy way to structure these slanted gratings is ion beam etching. Therefore, we use an ion beam that is uh, parallel and directed to your substrate surface, and depending on the required slant angle, you tilt your substrate to a certain angle. And so you etch uh, with your ions the structures that are defined by a chromium mask that is on top of your optical material. To achieve their certain uh, quality of these surface relief gratings shapes, of the shapes of the trenches, you have to, to balance their different uh, parameters of your ion beam process. These param parameters can be parameters of the ion beam source, like the beam energy and the beam density, but also can be the portion of uh, reactive gases that are used to etch the materials while the mass uh, shall resist the etch uh, access. So with all these parameter optimization and adjustment, uh, we can control the trench shape. So you see here three examples of different recipes that are used to achieve either a bottom with a round shape or a bottom with a parallel shape or with a flat shape or also sidewall angles that differ uh, of the left side and the left side of the trench like the back side and the front side of your grating. For surface relief grating etching we have two different types of equipment for two, two different types of application. On the left hand side you see the standard ion beam etching tool with reactive process, the so-called reactive ion beam etching or RIBE. This uh, can achieve an etching with a constant slant angle and a constant depth over the whole uh, optical area to be processed. On the right hand side, the more fancy thing is a tool that can be used to produce such varying slant angle gratings. So you see that from left to right in the lower structure, this land angle varies from a negative to perpendicular to a positive angle. I will focus uh, on this reactive ion beam trimming technology in the next part of my talk. The ion beam trimming principle is explained here in this slide. 
we use a localized etching by a focus broad ion beam. That means we use a broad ion beam source and focus there by grid design to a beam spot size of a few millimeters. Then we raster scan the sample, the substrate, a wafer or an optical substrate in front of that ion beam. And during the scanning, line by line, we vary the uh, velocity, that means the dwell time uh, of uh, our ion beam at a certain position. And so we achieve there a more removal or a less removal at the desired positions. An example of this process flow is shown in the diagrams on the bottom of the slide. You see on the left hand side a flat wafer as it is in origin and after processing you see there a checkerboard of uh, uh, this film thickness in the range of 20 nanometers variation. This is what we are able to achieve with such a scanning ion beam over the surface. To do it in a defined manner we need a pre-calculation for this velocity map and create there then the desired uh, patterns. The experimental setup what we used for our uh, first tests. As material, as base material on a silicon wafer we have the silicon oxide or silicon nitride or titanium oxide as an optical material we want to structure. As a mask we use chromium on top. The chromium uh, was designed in lines with 400 nanometer line width and 800 nanometers pitch. We used a gas composition containing argon, fluorinated gases and oxygen as background gas. And the beam we used here, we applied here, was a 6 millimeter half width full maximum uh, beam as in the shape of a two-dimensional Gaussian. With uh, that process set up, we scanned several areas on a wafer. So we defined a chip size of 30 mm times 30 mm square. And we scanned over that area uh, with a varying angle. That means we started at an angle of minus 60 degree on the left end of such a chip, uh, went over the perpendicular incidence to a positive angle of 60 degree on the right end of the chip. Another important parameter is the selectivity of the materials. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's important that the chromium mass thickness is not too thick to avoid any shadowing effects and any to not to create any shoulders in the trench sidewalls and to disturb our uh, desired pattern. Therefore, it's important that the selectivity is pretty good. Uh, selectivity of mask to the optical material. With some process optimization we achieved a, a good values, pretty well values, pretty excellent values we achieved for silicon oxide that has 10 to 16 times higher edge rate compared to chromium. For titanium oxide or silicon nitride we achieved a factor of 4, what is still good enough for the recent optical designs of the SRGs. Another important parameter is the angle dependency of the edge rate. Uh, the edge rate of ion beam processing is strongly dependent of the incident angle, especially for the typical used dielectric optical materials. So here an example uh, for the silicon nitride. On the left you see, on the left uh, picture in the lower area, you see a variation of minus 15 degree to plus 15 degree and over that area of 50, 50 or over that angle range of plus minus 15 degree we see a variation in the edge rate of uh, more than 2.2 so that means that under plus minus 15 degree the edge rate is more than double than the edge rate in the perpendicular incidence this is a important parameter that needs to be considered for the calculation of the dwell time And now I come to the results. Here the silicon nitride is optical material. Uh, in the sketch in the uh, lower range you see that uh, we have defined there two angles, a front side angle and a back side angle called alpha and beta and indicated with a blue and a yellow color. 
And now you see here these uh, colored dots in the diagram that indicate the achieved slant angle, so the front side and the back side slant angle uh, at certain positions on our uh, scan area. And in the red line, you indicate here the angle variation over that uh, scan area. And so it's uh, easy to be seen that uh, with a uh, incident angle of minus 60 degree going up to an incident angle of plus 60 degree, we achieve there also slant angles in a similar range with a slight variation between a front angle and a back angle. What may be beneficial for certain applications, but uh, also uh, needs to be improved for other applications where you want to have parallel side walls. A similar process setup was used for titanium oxide structuring. Here you see um, similar behavior. So uh, the angle range of minus 60 to plus 60 degree was applied on the uh, uh, range of 30 millimeter scan area. And even here you see that we pretty well produced the same incident angle as a slope angle or a slant angle in our structure. What is also to be seen that here a variation of front angle to back, in comparison to, to the backside angle is larger than in the silicon nitride case. These are uh, uh, yeah, typical, typical achievements as a first trial. You see that our edge depths are not as much, uh, so it will be improved in the next experiments. Finally, i like to conclude that we are able to demonstrate the ability to add slanted relief gratings with a varying slant angle by our reactive ion beam trimming technology. This unique process setup uh, is provided by Skier Systems uh, Soleil in the world, so we are the only one producing such tools. And uh, we have also development work in front of us, so we will future improve their, their reactive gas composition to achieve a better control of the sidewall angle parallelism or sidewall angle shape of the bottom shape of the structures and also the selectivity shall be improved. Furthermore, we want to achieve a better aspect ratio and uh, we want to optimize the geometry also to uh, have structures that can be used as nano imprint masters, as stamps for nano imprint applications. Before I ultimately end the talk, I'd like to say a big thank you to my colleagues Mandy, Carsten, Stefan and Toralf, uh, who did all the process development work here at Skia Systems. I'd like to say thank you to Crystal Tanner and her group at EVG Austria, who helped with the chromium mask preparation. And I'd like to say thank you to Dr. Rittrich and his group at Fraunhofer Enas here in Chemnitz for the SEM images. And of course, I'd like to thank you for listening attentively.